The Rugby Championship for 2024 has ended and the All Blacks, they did finish second. In this video, we're going to be going through each individual position and deciding who the best player was for the ABs. Now, unfortunately, at times, we didn't see a huge amount of squad rotation. So for certain positions... It's really only a one-horse race. But I should clarify, this is not what I feel is the strongest lineup that the All Blacks can go with going forward. We are going to have a different video coming up soon doing that concept. But in terms of who I felt was the best number one for New Zealand in this comp, it's actually very difficult. Because I'll be honest, this is actually the only position that we saw two men get almost equal game time in. Although we saw a little bit more of one of them up until he did have his injury. I have gone Ethan de Groot as the best number one for New Zealand throughout this rugby championship. Now that could be considered the wrong decision. To Mike D. Williams, I think he had a really strong competition, but I found he was better off the bench than when he was starting. Now Ethan de Groot was injured for those two games up against the South Africans, so to Mike D. Williams straight away getting thrown in the deep end a little bit when you're facing up against the world champs. But I still think that Ethan de Groot, in terms of what he was able to do early on, in the rugby championship as well as up against the Australians near the end particularly that second match is why I've given him that number one jersey number two this is not debatable Cody Taylor 52 carries 235 meters carried and 60 tackles throughout the rugby championship New Zealand's line out extremely accurate actually in those first two games up against Argentina it was working maybe the best we had seen it all throughout the year because those matches in the July internationals up against the English New Zealand weren't really getting it right and that combination of Tupavai 4 Sam Derry number 5 it actually looked like it had potential and possibly something they would try a bit later on in the competition but that did not happen Scott Barrett returning and he did take that number 4 jersey back number 3 this is where I've gone Tyrell Lomax now they didn't actually give anyone else a starting opportunity in that number three jersey, Lomax playing every single match. I would have loved to see Pasilio Tosi get a start. Definitely in that second game up against the Wallabies. We saw what he was able to do off the bench. We also saw him have a real impact off the bench up against Fiji. So hopefully more minutes for that man during the November internationals. But that is the front row who I feel was the strongest in each position. Now we move on to the locking duo. Now number four, bear with me. I've gone Scott Barrett. Now, some people would argue that he did not have his best rugby championship. The captaincy of Scott Barrett, something that New Zealanders are slowly maybe getting used to. It's still hard to tell. I feel like there's a lot of people who still want Savia. But to Scott Barrett's credit, first match up against the Australians, I felt was his best of the rugby championship at the time. And then that last match that he played up against the Aussies, I think he actually went a little bit higher than that. So... That is great news for Scott Barrett that he's starting to get a little bit of his form because we've got to remember it probably wasn't just the captaincy that was causing Scott Barrett to have a few shaky games. It's also the fact that he hasn't actually played that much rugby recently, having a few injuries to deal with. And sometimes certain players need back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back games to get their rhythm back. So hopefully we see some good stuff from Scott Barrett in that number four jersey throughout the November. Internationals number five, this is where I've gone you could argue he was the best five in the whole competition. 48 carries, 14 lineouts won, and 72 tackles made throughout the competition. Him and Rua Nokia, I think, were both real standouts for their sides. In terms of being one of those guys without as much experience as some of those other members in the four-pack and still being able to step up and really cementing yourself in the starting lineup. So I'm very happy for Tupovai. I hope that they don't move him to six. Like some people are insinuating, just because at the moment, while you've got something working so well, you don't really want to switch that. So that's why I keep him as that number five in the loose board trio. Number six, due to the Ethan Black at an injury, we were given a chance to see Wallace Satiti in action. And it was a bold call from the selectors because they had tried Summer Penny Finau up against the English, and he hadn't really found that rhythm. At international level, we didn't actually see him at all, I don't believe, throughout this rugby championship, with the exception of maybe one game where he did make his way off the bench. But Wallace Satiti, 48 carries from the games that he played in. He is an absolute unit and a really bright prospect for New Zealand. I just hope they use him well and they don't decide, now that he's had some good games, 
when Ethan Blackadder returns, just to chuck Blackadder straight back in that starting side. I would love to see more of Satiti, definitely up against the likes of Ireland, England and France during November. Number seven, this one's also a little bit controversial because I believe the man that I've selected here did not have the best rugby championship, but he is really the only guy that they have tried as the number seven. So that is Sam Kane selected here. Now, if anyone else got some sort of decent minutes for that number seven jersey, perhaps we would have seen a change here. But Sam Kane consistently selected. He brought up his 100 caps. That was probably his worst game of the rugby championship. The week prior, he had five tackles made, missing three, including one that allowed the Australians to score. He's got a lot of pressure on him. And the big question is, does Scott Robertson see Sam Kane as a guy he wants to take into the November internationals? There's no denying what that man has done for the All Blacks, though. Around a decade, he has been putting on that All Blacks kit. And with the fact that he's not going to be playing for New Zealand next year, maybe November is where they start to bring in that young blood. But number seven, Sam Kane. Number eight, Artie Savia. So I've gone with 89 carries throughout the rugby championship, 17 defenders beaten and 84 tackles. And it wasn't even his best rugby championship performance. He has got a lot more than what he gave throughout that competition. And the fact that we're saying that when he's got so many stats in his favor throughout the season is pretty impressive. And it just shows how highly people rate Artie Savia as a player. But now moving on to the back line, number nine, I've gone Cortez Aratama, number 10, Damian McKenzie. Now, the reason that I did those two at the same time, that sounded dodgy. Now, the reason that I've gone with those two in the same category is because I believe that was the combination they should have gone with from the start of the rugby championship. They only really trialed it at times. And during those games, you know, there were some good signs for New Zealand. Bowden Barrett, of course, playing 10 in the very last game. And some would say that he had a better performance than McKenzie did the week prior, but he didn't play enough at 10 for me to be able to select him as the best number 10 throughout the whole competition. Cortez Ratama, he should have been selected at times over TJ Perenara, including that second game up against the Australians. But of course, it was TJ's last game on home soil, so they decided to give him the chance in that contest. But Ratama, he's got speed, he's got agility and around that side of the breakdown. He can find those gaps and also some great passing to go Alongside it, Damian McKenzie, he has got that X factor. But every once in a while, it seems to disappear and it gets very tricky for him. But I think if they're going to use him as a player off the bench throughout the November internationals, because if they do select him at 10 again, there will be a lot of people whining about the fact that it's not Bowden Barrett. So if they are going to select him as that impact player, I do see him doing relatively well, mainly because of the cover that he does offer. He can either be your 10 or he can drop into fullback if they do need a reshuffle. But moving on to the centres, number 12, I've gone with Geordie Barrett. We saw Anton Leonard Brown get a little bit of game time here, but I don't believe he got enough, even though in the games that we saw of him, he did look extremely strong. But for Geordie Barrett, he played five games. The only one that he didn't was the second match up against the Australians due to that knee injury. Got himself a try, 216 metres carried, 14 defenders beaten, also to try assist. So for Jordy Barrett, he was definitely the better out of the midfield combination, but there are still arguments that could be said about Jordy Barrett not having the greatest rugby championship. They kind of forced him into form, if that makes sense, but unfortunately did suffer that injury near the end of the competition. So the question mark is still there of whether or not he will be taking part in the November internationals. If he's not, I feel like Anton Leonard Brown Probably that most likely, unless they want to bring someone in. We are going to be doing an All Black squad prediction, as well as what we would like to see for the All Black squad. So perhaps we could see a big change in that number 12 jersey. But Geordie Barrett, he is my 12, number 13, because they only played one guy and he had a very up and down rugby championship. It is Rico Ioani as my number 13. I would have loved to see two or three games for Billy Proctor throughout this rugby championship because I've seen people saying how Billy Proctor didn't look that great up against the Tasman Marcos and the Bunnings EBC and I could agree with that a little bit but then you've also got to remember the amount of time in between matches has been incredible for Billy Proctor. He's been in the squad the whole time but the last game that he played 
for the ABs was up against Fiji. So he had about two months where the All Blacks weren't willing to give him the crack, which makes me wonder, are they willing to take him to the Northern Hemisphere and give him some game time there? Or are we going to just see Ioane as that number 13? Overall, I feel like there was still a lot that could have been improved in that midfield combination. But that is what happens when you bring two slightly out of form players together, even if they've got that proven record of the past, Sometimes it just takes that little bit longer to get them to gel once more. But moving on to the back three, number 11. This one is not debatable. Caleb Clark as the left winger. Six tries throughout the rugby championship. The leading try scorer of the whole competition. Six clean breaks and 300 metres carried for that man. He was strong under the high ball. Unfortunately, one of the negatives that we could say about his game is he's developed a very good skill of getting yellow cards. Two games in a row now. He's managed to get that card. Must be learning a bit too much from the captain, Scott Barrett. But I feel like Caleb Clark is definitely that 11 going into the November internationals. Mark Talia, I'm wondering where they squeeze him into the side now. Because you could say that right wing's open if they're going to give Bowden Barrett the chance at number 10 and then have Will Jordan 15. That means that right wing, Sever Reese, I don't think has cemented that jersey as of yet. So maybe Talia goes out onto that side or plays maybe every second game with Caleb Clark starting. The others, number 14, this is where I've gone, Will Jordan. Now he did play quite a bit of 15 alongside 14, but I don't think Severese did enough to be counted as the best number 14 throughout the rugby championship. His form has been very up and down, a little bit similar to Rico Ioane. But Will Jordan, he definitely has a home in that All Blacks back three, whether that is at 14 or... Or at 15, he's managed to score himself a few tries throughout this competition, which will be a big confidence booster, seeing as he was in a little bit of a patch where he wasn't scoring a huge amount of tries for the ABs, but now he's found that rhythm once more, so I'd have him there as the best number 14. And then at number 15, for the best of the All Blacks, I have gone Bowden Barrett. Now, you could also make the argument that Will Jordan and some of the performances he's had at number 15 was better than Bowden Barrett, but if we're basing it off the amount of minutes we have seen certain players in positions, it felt like the easy scenario to put Bowden Barrett number 15 and have Will Jordan as that number 14, but Bowden Barrett, there are a lot of questions. Like I said, is he going to be a 10 from now on? In the initial squad, when it was named, he was listed as a fly half. They have Harry Plummer in for injury cover. Is he going to travel up to the Northern Hemisphere? We get to find out in the very near future, though, Scott Robertson will be announcing his side next Monday. So we will have a video, of course, coming out with that announcement alongside a few other videos before that, having a few predictions and whatnot before November. But if Bowden Barrett is the 10, one thing I'll say is I don't want to see it partnered with TJ Perenara as the number nine. It just felt like that combination didn't really work in the second match up against the Australians. And I feel like that would be the perfect opportunity to give the youngsters like Cortez Aratama a chance to play alongside Bowden Barrett, who in the past, when he's had that 10 jersey, has looked extremely composed and is really able to control that back line. But nonetheless, that is my All Blacks best player in each of the positions. Like I said earlier on, this is not what I feel is the strongest team that they can use moving forward. This is not my prediction for what they're going to go with in November. All of those kind of concepts will be separate videos. But like I said, with the All Blacks not making many changes in terms of their lineups throughout the rugby championship, it meant that there wasn't as much debate as when we did do the same video, but with the uh, Springbok side. But do let me know who you think were the best players in each position in the comments down below. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you all for the next one. Here we see the rare species of Razor. It makes no changes in his starting line.